Rugby on Off the Ball with Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us, everyone in. Now excited to say we are joined by Ronan O'Gara. Hello, Ronan. Hi, Joe. How are you? Very well. It's been a long time. How are you keeping? Yeah, I'm good. Good, yeah. Not too bad. Digging away here. I don't know, is the, the hole getting bigger or am I going okay? But it's, um, yeah, tough going at the minute over here, but that's... that's uh, what I expected, so just um, hanging in there, hanging in there. You keep digging and then people will start throwing in soil on top of you then as you work away. Yeah, no, it's um, oh, the Champions Cup is such a great competition that you'd like to have gone a bit better, but uh, that's the way it is. Exeter were a good team, half chances uh, that we gave them, they took, and um, I can say we were way too ill-disciplined, mm. so that just doesn't work away from home, unfortunately. I'll come to Europe in just one moment, just to get an overall sense of how things are going, if I can. Looking at La Rochelle in the top 14, uh, five defeats, four wins. There's a very obvious pattern, frankly, which is you've won all your home games and you've lost all your away games. It's the most cliched French thing I could even imagine. Is, is it that simple or what's been going on generally? No, it, it isn't really, no. I think... Um we had opportunities. We wouldn't have beaten Claremont in the first game, but we had an opportunity to potentially get a bonus point. We could have beaten Montpellier away, but we didn't put him away in the first half. And that's what happens in France. You kind of have to be nearly 10 points clear uh, being the away team because the home team usually has a purple patch with the last 10 minutes to go with the crowd behind them. Uh, Bayon was, was probably the most disappointing. We were well clear and uh, they got a red card and... But their players in fair some roles to that game and uh, they came back at us. So um, we've had opportunities. Um, I suppose the most pleasing aspect of it all um, is the fact that uh, you, you do feel you're getting better and you do feel that uh, players are buying in. And once you have that, it makes going, um, going not going to work, but makes, um, you know, I suppose, you appreciate that you're working with a good group. Mm. So you have not felt any need to address any attitude towards away form or anything like that? Of course, yeah, because obviously we don't look upon it in terms of um, you know, I mean, winning, losing. We're trying to get a, a base level performance mm. and we haven't got that in any game in terms of home or away because we've played in dribs and drabs, but that's uh, not good enough. But it, it's, it's ten, 10 games in now um, into the season. So, uh, well, it'll be 10... Uh, league games into it this weekend so um, there's very little between a lot of the teams obviously Bordeaux and Leon are runaway uh, leaders but uh, everything else is to play for so yeah. we well, just have to look at that Well you're at the same points as Racing in the table one behind Toulouse Ten games in are you asking the team to do very different things are they working with a new defensive system and new things in attack are, they, are, you, are you all adjusting to each other or has there been a degree of continuity from before no, you I took over it would, be, it would have been um very different, I think, from talking to a lot of the players. Uh, so you're essentially trying to create, I suppose, strong bases to, uh, I suppose, create pillars of performance. So you want to have a strong set piece. You want to have a good defence. You want to, in winter, you need to have a good kicking game in France. Yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously you need to have a good attack game. So uh, there's loads to work on, Joe, but I suppose you have to be realistic in what you can bite off to and achieve. Sure. People will remember uh, two years ago, certainly, around this time of year, La Rochelle going to Belfast and sticking 41 points on Ulster and getting out of that pool. They lost in a quarter-final away to Scarlets, but certainly showed a certain appetite for Europe and a bit of pedigree there. Uh, this year, I presume, given your history in the competition, you wanted to go well in Europe and were targeting getting out of the pool or was, was domestic yeah. issues more the issue? No, no you, you wanted not, to do well, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah, I think... If you're there, and, um, you want to give it your best shot. And to be fair, uh, if you picked up the paper and had a look at, their, at the result against Exeter, you would have thought, you know, I mean, that they did a big number on us. But in reality, it was a little bit different. To game kind of swayed on. Um, we were fourteen five down after fifty two minutes. I think we had a great opportunity. But in fairness to Slade, who was extremely sharp all day, he picked off an, an, an intercept, a long pass, which favours obviously the defence ball in the air, favours the defence. So uh, we're kind of 
working on, on shorter passing game, but he picked it off and that was kind of a 14 point swing and they're out of sight at 21 five. Mm. So if we could kind of pressurize them to get the 14, 10, even 14, 12, it could have been a different game with the better team won. No, no problem admitting that in the weekend, um, you know, I mean, away from home, mm. you need 15 on the, on the pitch. Um, never mind 14. And um, we had 13 at stages. Um, that was disappointing, but the flip side of that then was, I suppose, the boys never um, threw in the towel, and that's admirable. Yeah, that finished 25-15. At the point where you went down to 14 men, it was, there was only a three-point game just before half-time. And you had a man in the sin bin, and then your hooker, Pierre Borgery, uh, was sent off really for an alleged eye gouge. The referee, Andy Brace, went over to your captain and said he's clearly put a finger to the eye. I think everybody in the stadium realised and judging by your demeanour, you seem to realise as well what had happened. So how do you handle a situation like that with a player who's done something like that? Um, well, yeah, I think I suppose I have to be a little bit careful sure. because there's an official meeting tomorrow, hearing. So I think uh, on our next chat, we'll be able to talk accurately about that because, um, you know, I think... Um, the perception and the reality may be different, but if, depending on how the hearing goes, I think, Joe, it's better if I comment that's probably fair after enough. that event because I've officially... Yeah, no, that's fair That's fair enough. I think people understand you're in that, that position. But yeah. then, but then after, know, af but after that, then six minutes into the second half, well, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're at 14 men because you still have another fella in the sin bin, and then there's another yellow card and you're down to 13 men. Has discipline been an issue for the team generally? I mean, what was your reaction when you saw all this in, in, in broad terms? No, because the week previously was excellent and that's that's against, you know, probably a more pre proven team or more successful team in England than Exeter. I know mm. we were at home, but I think, um, no, it was, it was, it was uh, I suppose, there was a level of disappointment with uh, potentially the breakdown, how it was refereed. Uh, at the weekend and there's different interpretation and there's um, you know I think when you're Faf de Clerk and you've Tom Curry, Curry yeah. um, they probably have a say how it goes but on the other side we had Victor Vito captaining us so uh, in that regard uh, our discipline wasn't good enough no doubt about it uh, dis disappointing on the day but um, has it been a consistent theme um, yes, it has started the season, then got much better, got worse, got much better, <laughs> much better. And then um, I think a record level of 16 penalties at the weekend. Mm. So how do you address something like that? I think you have to educate players. I have to educate my players. You have to actually show them what are non-negotiable. Then you have to actually show them if there is such a good thing as a penalty, mm. which there are in certain cases. But then obviously... They didn't get penalised in the scrum. We got penalised four times in scrum time. So then you're down to 12. Uh, um, we had another one for uh, yellow card for, you know, potential uh, early tackle try saving scenario. I don't think you can manage with that. Uh, Jeffrey Dumaru uh, stood on a player's hand. That's normally a yellow card. So we probably got away with one there. Um, but um yeah, i think sometimes i think putting players in potential scenarios about uh when is it a good time to give a penalty and when isn't it and then obviously we've got to understand uh, we did actually profile the referee and and we actually listened to him before the game but unfortunately uh, we'd either misunderstood the message or he didn't uh, referee how he would say it at the, in throughout the game. Okay. This is obviously your first time in a head coach role. You're a few months into it now. Has it been largely as you expected or have you been surprised or blindsided by any aspects of the job? No, I think uh, along what I expected. Very, very exciting, very interesting, um, challenging, obviously, but... Um, <coughs> That's what top level sports about is you need to have perseverance, you need to I mean have a dogged determination. So uh probably going through a disappointing patch, no doubt about that, but uh, the wheel will turn most mm. definitely. I guess that's the voice of experience speaking there, because you've been through run of the mill moments before. 
are the local press giving the team stick um, or is there increased scrutiny post World Cup? What's that that kind of cocktail locally been like? Um yeah, I think there would be um obviously um question marks raised obviously the foreign director of rugby and a foreign head coach were in France so that would be the first thing they'd look at but I think um, I think the most important thing is that the values of the club are respected and I think once the players show the effort they're shown I think um, they'll stick with us yeah yeah, I suppose that's all you can do in uh, many respects. It was, it was noticeable that John O'Gibbs was there beside you on match day. Is that the usual thing? Are you watching the matches in tandem together? No, sometimes he's down a pitch level. Uh, just depending on, on... I like being up high. I think it's it's important that I kind of have can uh, get a view of where the space is potentially. And obviously, uh, I like him being kind of down at the pitch side. But for Europe, he's... He's uh, up high, and um, that's that's how it works. But right. it's only two games into it, I think. Yeah. You know. And are you uh, are you emerging as a complete control freak as a head coach, or are you able to give it, delegate a bit of control? <laughs> no, most definitely control. You have to I think it's it's that would be my personality too. I think you mm. just uh, especially my experience with the Crusaders. I think uh, you can see the value of of. Um, unity or, or shared ideas and shared responsibilities obviously you find yourself probably telling a lot more than i'd like to you'd like to to be uh you know, i think player led a little bit more but with just with the challenge with the language barrier and with games backing up every week mm. you find your days just passing you by joe and that's something which isn't great sometimes less is more but at the minute, I'm I'm not doing that. Yeah, and where does family time time come into it and switching off and and not getting too stressed um, yourself or worn down? No, I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I just um, well, I don't know. I'm good at that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. Well, tomorrow is a, has players day off, but that's the big change. I think the fact when you are a specialist coach or you mean defence coach or attack coach or backs coach, you could. Just nail your area. Now, yeah. your area strays into everything. Everything, but yeah. you have to yeah. realise that you can't impact everything. And the most important thing for me is that um, I feel that the players can approach me, and that you have hunger and an appetite to to uh, to be full of energy in front of your players. Okay. Well, it's Castro away this Saturday, and then uh, Europe for the following two weeks. As for the competition generally at the weekend, I know you managed to catch quite a few of the Irish provinces. Very interested to know what you made of Munster and Racing's game. It was a great game. It was a very enjoyable watch as well. Uh, Munster probably felt they were about to lose it and then were kicking themselves because they could have easily won it. JJ Hanrahan finds himself in that position where all the good stuff he's done in the game, and there's lots of it, you then kind of have your performance a little bit assessed by the drop goal at the very end. But he seemed to be good, and, and people liked what they saw from Munster in general play. What, what were you seeing? Yeah, it was. It was a great game, I think. Obviously, um, you know, I mean, I, they're the two clubs I know particularly well, obviously. Mm. And um, I think, uh, tactically, I thought Racing were excellent. I really thought they got their game plan right. I think Teddy Eberlin was uh, running the show. And then you have, uh, when you get Finn Russell in form like that, he's 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 very, very exciting and very dangerous. But I think a lot of the um, plaudits would go to Dunnick Ryan, I think, Having played with him and obviously coached him, um, he's a genius around the line out. I think they they made a mess of Munster's line out. They had a, he had a big impact in that. Munster couldn't get their their set piece game going at all. Mm. Uh, and honestly, I thought looking at it, you you thought Racing could be easily twenty points clear. But that's the beauty of Munster, unless you you literally have to keep your foot on the throat and stamp on them because you won't knock them out. And they had no right to even draw that game, yeah. let alone they'll be disappointed probably uh, that they, they, they didn't uh, they didn't win the game. But uh, all credit to them for hanging in there. Yeah. They're on the ropes on so many occasions. You know, you saw the class of him off. You saw the class of Teddy Thomas. Uh, but Monster just uh, and their supporters. I think it's more to do with the supporters as well. They just refused to die, and that was another perfect example of. Why they have such a good record in Tolman Park? It was a great game, good standard, 
dry ball, mm. uh, great width in the game, great pace in the game. Racing came to play. I think their skills um, made sure that they, they were in that position to play. Um, give a tip of the hat to Mike Prendergast. I think tactically he got it he got it spot on. They didn't play it too much in their own half. And um, mm. they troubled Munster, but they couldn't kill them. Mm. And then Munster came back. And as you said, brilliant conversion from JJ after an exquisite pass. pass. Um, and then there looks like only one winner, but, um, you know, that is the, that's the beauty of a drop goal in terms of when do you take it. Yeah. Probably got too near the post if, the, if, the, if you could... If you could comment on it, you know, as a kicker or a former kicker, you probably want that uh, in a kick zone as opposed to in a chip zone. And when it went into the chip zone, I think it becomes a little bit more difficult. And could he drop? To, he could have dropped deeper into the pocket then, could he, to buy himself a few more metres back? Uh, but, yeah, but I probably thought maybe three or four phases earlier that was yeah, the time to strike. time to do it, yeah. That, that's, that's one opinion and... In twenty thousand, you know, I think. Uh, in fairness, your your opinion once probably becomes central. It becomes your your opinion probably carries a bit more weight than the other twenty thousand. Uh, how did you pick your moment? Uh, what 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 was too close to goal for you? I just think any time the ball becomes static, it becomes problematic. You know, obviously the easiest one for people to to picture, to analyze, or visualize is be the drop goal against Wales. Once the defence is in a set position in the starting blocks positions where they're in sprint mm. position, it, it, it makes a change your technique because by the time you get the pass and you have to get the ball in the air, the advantage is with the defence. But once you actually have a, you know, a mall going forward yeah. or uh, any bit of a forward carry, the, the unexpected factor, i.e. Johnny against... Um, France instead of France, yeah, he fooled everyone. But probably that was more a distance issue. But once it comes in, you know there's only one thing. Um, but he just got it on the inside of his foot. It can easily yeah. happen. Yeah. That yeah. that happens. But as a as a kicker, you don't want to be thinking to yourself, "I'm about to be charged down. I need to scoop this up early." Yeah, I think that's exactly what you do. You, you, but as you say, the the flip side to the argument shows you just take. Another seven meters depth. Yeah, you just got to make sure that your your nine stings your hands with the pass. That's what you want. And Camille, do you get a, a, a residual kind of flicker in your in your quad muscle as you're watching them build up for the goal? You get your your foot starts tapping, <laughs> does it? <laughs> no, no. But I think I'd love to have seen JJ do that because yeah. he's had a, a fair bit of adversity, and that kick from the touchline was brilliant. And uh, I think. You know, I mean, from a very selfish point of view, it's why you do all the extras. You're kind of 20 minutes at the end of every team session, and then yeah. why your day off is taken up with that, that. That's for moments like that. But when you keep knocking on the door, the door will knock down eventually. So you can get it the next time. And I'm sure Munster fans will be looking for um, general thoughts on, on Stephen Larkham and, and his fingerprints and to what extent they're on the performance. There was a, a moment. In the second half, and there was a Munster were under the cosh a bit, and they got a line out around halfway, and they put a lovely kind of little wraparound type play, yeah. and, and and they got Huge. out wide to to Keith Earls early, and they made big meters as well. And I I did find myself thinking, I don't know how often we have seen that in high level games from Munster in the past, and no, I did yeah, wonder is that Larkham? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, there's a definite like I would say, in previous regimes that would be catch and drive box kick. Yeah, but you could see that that was. Uh, I would say Larkham's um, print all over that. Uh, he was probably disappointed, I think, with such a good opportunity he didn't finish it. It was that good, you're right. It was a brilliant, beautiful set play. Um, and I, I don't recall, actually, who um, who stuck who in the past, but it was a missed opportunity because of the, I suppose, the work done on the inside. That, But, uh, as you say, a big positive, mm. and you just have to put the finishing touch to it. Yeah, and they well, okay. The finishing touch. Probably, I, I was about to say uh, they they put it together very well. So I was going to yes. say there's a skill set there, but I suppose the the finish is all important as well, and they'll they'll develop that. I guess maybe maybe some of those players aren't used to being in those situations as much. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point, exactly. But I think that's the mentality of good teams. You strike to score, so our first phase they'd be looking to score mm. because you know what I mean you have 16 forwards tied in either in a scrum or 
or 14 in a line out. So the space is, is for backline against backline. So that's still what makes rugby exciting that you still, people give out about all the, the rush defence, but there's still opportunities. It's a case of identifying it and, as you say, being able to execute under pressure. We don't have time to talk really about the other provinces. We're going to do um, Connacht in a bit of depth tomorrow and we'll do Ulster's win against Claremont as well. Just one question on Leinster's win away to Leon. Mm. Kind of a strange game in some respects, obviously, because they didn't score for so long after going 10-0 up. How good is this Leon team? Another top of the table. Like Maybe we're underestimating how good a win this was. Are, are, are Leon in yeah, false Leinster. position? You have to... Um, Leinster were really good. It was, it was a, a comfortable victory managed the game you can say they didn't score for 50 odd minutes but I think they set down their marker early in their game um, championship teams like Leinster they show different traits at different stages of the season they were dogged it on Saturday they knew how to get over the line that's what leaders do they have plenty of them in their team they took the life out of out of Leon Leon didn't really uh pose many threats for Leinster it was a comfortable win the scoreline doesn't suggest that but in terms of the body language in terms of of squeezing the life out of Leon Leinster did a great job right and how good that Leon team are good are they they're going to be yeah they're very good especially at home sorry and yeah. talking about top 14 but it's a different um, mindset altogether and I think uh, French teams probably underappreciated because you've 26 league games for them every Saturday is the same even though there is a big jump to Champions Cup level but it's it's hard to change the machine that quickly Joe I think right. where you play in the in the Pro 14 or you play you know in Ireland Scotland or or um, Wales these are the six games that everyone lives for mm. okay listen let you go good luck Saturday thanks so much thanks Joe great to chat see you thanks rugby on off the ball with Vodafone official sponsors of the Irish rugby team Team of us, everyone in.